Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are talking about roads and I'm gonna cover a couple of tips on how to build better ones. Starting with a very important one. Now be honest, do you build roads like this? Where you gotta jump up to actually get to the top? Well that won't do, will it? Now I know what you're saying, Double Roads aren't meant for people, they're meant for cars. And to that, I say poppycock. Yes, poppycock. Because I am a cyberpunk, and if I want to walk in the road, I will. And if you build your roads like this, I will find you, and I will f fix them. Just like this. By putting in some walls, like that, and then some carpet over the top. And this works very well with the dark grey, or any of the concrete and wool combinations but obviously dark gray and maybe light gray are the only ones that you'd want to use and that just gives you that half a hitbox step up so that you can actually walk right up these and down very easy very nice now obviously there are other options for building roads like blackstone deep slate and light gray concrete and wool but honestly none of them give you the proper asphalt look as gray concrete does so I would stick to the other options for either side streets or alleyways or maybe even your pavements and stick with the grey concrete look for your main roads. One thing that Deep Slate is very good for is portraying cracks and faded bits in your road and that brings me to point number two. States of disrepair. Not every road in your city is going to be at the same level of disrepair. Some of them will be nice and smooth with maybe the odd little patch. Some of them might be a little bit more worn down and some of them might be completely riddled with potholes and uh, that just gives you a great opportunity to again tell a story about your city which parts are in richer areas which is in semi-maintained areas and which is just complete slum it's also worth noting the technology of your world do most of your cars hover are a lot of them still with wheels or is it a combination of the two that in itself can dictate which one of these roads you actually need to use and in some areas you might have heavier trucks in other areas you might just have light vehicles all of these things are considerations that should be taken for a truly authentic look. And speaking of authentic, that brings me on to my next point, road markings. Are you going for more of a European white stripe kind of look or more the American yellow? Adding markings for intersections or parking or having stoplights, either as a hologram like these ones or maybe, you know, proper traffic lights like these. These things can again add a lot of authenticity to your city. And that brings me on to my next point, which is storage. And one of the best opportunities for you to add a little bit of life and animation to your streets is through the use of steam vents. And here I just have a soul campfire underneath a trapdoor that lets out puffs of smoke every once in a while and makes it look like steam. Also, gutters and storm drains are great additions to any street and can help you add some extra interest and maybe uh, an easter egg and then finally we get to street lights and as you guys can see i've done a bit of preparation here so the first thing to note with street lights is that the general rule of thumb is as wide as the road is that's how high your street lamp is going to be so this road is 11 wide the street lamp is 11 high but it juts out by another three so that the 45 degree angle of the light in theory at least will reach the other side of the road. Most street lights project an oval shaped light cone, which you are trying to get to overlap with the next one. And that's why you would have a street light on this side of the road. And then the again, general rule of thumb is two and a half to three times the height of the lamp. You would space them apart and have the next lamp on the other side of the road and that causes this kind of overlap. Another good practice is where these overlaps don't entirely light up the road like over here, you would then put in a secondary small kind of pedestrian light. In this case, because it's cyberpunk, I've decided to put an advertisement board, but it could as easily have been just a little lamppost like this one, and that would fill in these gaps. And that is kind of the way that street lamps are designed in the real world. So you can interpret this any which way you want, but essentially, if you were to push this lamp back by two and put it on the outside edge of your um, pavement here, then the street lamp would either need to be too taller 
or it would need to jut out to a similar position over here to be able to shine the same sort of 45 degree angle light down to the other side of the road. And for my next trick, I needed to be night. So unfortunately, the way that lights work in Minecraft, most of these uh, lampposts wouldn't actually shine any kind of light spot on the road. So something that you could do is if you have access to light blocks, you could put a light block down right where the light is meant to be to add a little bit of a light spot. Or you could use the soul campfire light in your storm drains as a way of doing it. You could also have a light block behind your storm grate underneath your lamp. Or you could even have a soul lantern under a carpet in your road just to help give that illusion of an actual light spot being underneath the lamp. Now for a few bonus considerations. Number one being, if it is a cyberpunk city, the likelihood of it being road heavy is not that high. Most of the time there will be some kind of infrastructure for public transport or a lot of the cars will just be flying. However, the roads that you do have, make sure that you're not just making them straight. Sometimes they just have to bend around something and go at a diagonal or loop around something or they have to go up a couple for an incline. Also, maybe bike lanes, although cyberpunk, you know, who's, who's gonna be riding bicycles in a cyberpunk world? I, I don't know. But that's gonna do it for this video. So if you did find it useful, please do leave me a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Have a fantastic day and see ya. Uh, all right, dude, uh, where did I park my car?